All right, man, Torture Talk, 12 o'clock show. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. All right, look, man. Look, man. I still got on my Jerry Curl, man. I still got on my, still got my John on, you know? Still out here. You know what I'm saying? Still doing my thing. But look, so I've seen this a piece of this uh sh- this uh interview with this guy, and he was talking about Diddy, and he was talking about the prosecutor, the the uh, the uh, attorney general of New York, and he had a lot of interesting 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 things to say about the correlation between him, Diddy, and Epstein. And this is a fascinating clip. And I want y'all to see this because this is this is important. Now, a lot of us, we know Diddy's a scumbag. But there is other things at play that are kind of scary in a way. And I want y'all to see this. So before I get into that, you know, I got to get my spill. This is Torture Talk. Like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies. Put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content that's absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links on the screen. Cash at PayPal is in the description. Let me know where you're from, too, man. I really appreciate it. They called me the hidden gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 11,000, a million by Monday. So, look, man, we're going to get into this clip, man. We'll be back to discuss. <laughs> All right, so let's get it. P. Diddy had freak off parties, a bacchanalian or essentially. And politicians went to those parties. Celebrities went to those parties. Sports stars went to those parties. He had hidden audiovisual blackmail thing going on, like Epstein, like Craig Spence. Can P. Diddy blackmail those people by themselves? Or is he blackmailing for some kind of covert entity? Like, the Epstein grand jury in Florida, which the documents, were, the testimony was released about three weeks ago, and it really showed how corrupt it is. There, th- that special prosecutor, the assistant to the special prosecutor, she's calling this girl who was molested by Epstein when she was 14, who was testifying when she was 16, like a prostitute. I mean, you know, and, and that grand jury didn't. Yeah, I don't understand that. There's a lot of there's a lot of things going on in this Diddy case that's been covered up because there's a lot of participants in this whole thing. And again, this is this is not this this video is not to shoot any bell to Diddy. This video is to expose that they're all corrupt. They all have a lot of they all have a hidden agenda. They all are a part of the same system. You're fighting against the same enemy. With the enemy. You know what I'm saying? So with the enemy who c- claims they're on your side to fight that enemy, they're they're tricking you. That's all I'm saying. And this this he 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 brings up a lot of good points about this. Not indict Epstein on a single count of child abuse. So now we have Damian Williams, the US attorney for the Southern District, and who is considered the So y'all y'all Make sure y'all look up that name, Damian Williams. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all look up his name because what he's about to say is very important. Very important. To be the most powerful federal law enforcement officer in New York, the Southern District is, that's kind of like a special position for people. And we know that Damian Williams is overseeing this P. Diddy grand jury. Like, and whatever is going to come out of it, I believe the fix is in. I think P. Diddy might get it indicted. That, that grand jury has been in impaneled, I think, for about a month. I think P. Diddy might get indicted. I think some people, maybe one of his kids might get indicted. But P. Diddy had what he called freak-off parties. And What was that? P. Diddy had what he called freak-off It's crazy. This is crazy. Very crazy. You see how like there's multiple people involved in this whole thing. 
And even at the top, with people who are supposed to be honest about it, they're corrupt and they're uh, in on it. This is crazy. Parties. Freak off parties. Pre freak off parties, yeah. Where there, there would just be like a bacchanalian orgy, essentially. And politicians went to those parties. Celebrities went to those parties. Sports stars went to those parties. And he had that hidden audiovisual blackmail thing going on, like Epstein, like Craig Spence. And I just wonder, getting back to Clive Davis, did he get into that via Clive Davis or did he just come into it by himself? Now, that's a good question because uh, a lot of people are bringing up Clive Davis's name. I didn't know that Clyde Davis was into these freak off parties and stuff like that. Maybe that's uh, something that maybe need to be discovered. Uh, but I don't really care about the freak off part parties. I care about whether there were minors there. That's my biggest concern. And also I'm hearing now that they're saying that the, the baby oil had, the date rape drug inside of it. So I wonder how that plays out and how that's going to play out, but let's keep it going. But again, is P Diddy going to be blackmailing? Cause P Diddy dealt with some unbelievably powerful people. Can P Diddy blackmail those people by themselves or is he blackmailing for some kind of covert entity? That's a good question. Is he blackmailing people by himself or is it someone behind him trying to get more out of him to get to them? That's a great question. Interesting. That's, that's the question. But the fact that we got Damian Williams overseeing his investigation, it, it reached a point with P. Diddy where the, there were so many sexual assault lawsuits getting filed against him that something had to be done. And all this was coming out about his beating up women and, there was a president of Bad Boy Records that he took a baseball bat to. I mean, he's just a nasty piece of work. And I think it reached a critical mass where something had to be done. So call in Damian Williams. He's covered up Epstein. Now he's going to be covering up P. Diddy. What does he mean by that? He said he covered up Epstein, and now he's going to be covering up P. Diddy. Does he mean covering like like he's covering the case? Or is he covering up? So he's basically saying that he could be covering up. He covered up Epstein and what happened. Same guy, same prosecutor. And now he's going to be doing this to Diddy. So y'all be prepared for some things to be happening. I'm telling y'all, Diddy might be deleted soon. Yeah, that is a interesting commonality between the two, for sure. And here's another nexus. Damian Williams, his parents were Jamaican. And he got a grant from the Daisy and uh, from the Paul and Daisy Soros Foundation to go to, I think it was Yale Law School. I think he got like $90,000 from him. And that's Paul Soros is the brother of Peter Soros. And what's what I find now, this could be something really ominous or it could just be a very strange coincidence. On the board of the Paul and Daisy Soros Foundation is Peter Soros, Paul Soros' son and uh, Peter Soros' nephew. And he has circled twice in Epstein's black book, not just once, but twice. So is there something really ominous that's going on there? Or is that just a coincidence that, that Damian Williams gets this huge grant from the Paul and Daisy Soros Foundation and Peter Soros is on the board and Damian Williams just goes on to cover up Epstein? Um, 
these are one of those. Oh, shit. Wow. So he basically saying, like, one of the people that was on Epstein Island, or him, he was a part of the Soros family, and they hired this guy. Because y'all understand, without getting too political, George Soros, he kind of runs a lot of these uh, attorney generals in the this, in this inner cities in the states. He, he Essentially, he runs them, you know what I'm saying, in a way where he, he puts a lot of funding behind them. This could be the case, too, here, where there's a lot of things that are, that are known that the Soros family has or been a part of and Diddy knows. And this is the reason why this guy is taking on Diddy's case because he took on Epstein's case because the guy, one of the Soros family members were a part of Epstein's uh, whole debacle. So this here, that's a, man, this is crazy. Things that you never know, but it's certainly quite a coincidence that so there's a couple of nexuses there uh between epstein and p diddy although damian williams is certainly the common denominator do you know what politicians went to the parties is there any documentation of that there is i mean a where number would, where would people find that documentation it's it's coming out on the internet and various news organizations. Is it real? I think so. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that some of it's just salacious bullshit, but I'm also sure. I mean, there were a lot of people that P. Diddy sucked into his orbit. And it's entirely possible that they were blackmailed. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. There are, from what I'm reading, there are a lot of people who was there at them parties, and a lot of people participated. Now, again, there's nothing wrong with going to a party and doing little freak-offs or whatever. Drugging people, there's something wrong with that. Now, if, you, if there's volunteer drugs there and you take it, I don't know what to tell you, but if you drug somebody and did something to them, that's crazy. Shouldn't have been doing that. And was there minors there? Because that's the thing. Wow. Because he had those hidden cameras and a lot of powerful people and minors. We were talking about that before. If you're drinking and there's a minor and you think she's not a minor. You can I mean, your- just right there, you know, I mean, now I, th- I don't know. I don't, I'm, it, it, man, it's just so, it's tricky. It's tricky. Well, I mean, it's tricky. It is, you go to a party, maybe you don't know what's going on. You see a, a, a what you think is a woman with a drink that automatically would make you assume that she's 21 years old. Oh, surprise, she's not, and... We got you on camera. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's crazy. So this is the question I have for y'all, and I want y'all to answer this in the comments. Well, obviously you have to answer in the comments, but I want y'all to answer this for me. What should a person do if they go to a party and you don't know these people? Like, let's just say, because we all know, we all know that uh, young ladies do... Some of some of these young ladies, they could pass for women. Now, if you had an adult party, right? Let's say you go to an adult party. You go to uh, I don't know, uh, the, I don't know, some John John's Jamboree or something like that, right? You go to John's Jamboree and there's a bunch of girls there, and you know, ladies there, you know, and you go in there and they got drinks and they're having a good time and these they look like look like women, like like women. You know what I'm saying? What do you do if you find out that, like, if you did something with with someone, 
What do you do if you find out that they were underage? Like, what do you do about that? If you went to a party, like, how do you assess that? I, that, that is a very, very tricky thing. I don't get down with, with, with uh, I don't even go to parties because that's one of the reasons why I don't go to parties because you never know. But what should a person do if they, should the person ask the, a, a person for their ID at a party? And how do you know if that person's ID is fake or real? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I need to understand. Maybe somebody can explain it to me in the comments. How do you how do you assess something like that without knowing you go somewhere without knowing and these people, these women are underage and you didn't know, but they look like they're grown women. Like, how do you know? And that's the thing with P. Diddy, because Damian Williams is overseeing this, we're not going to really know. Mm -hmm. I mean, eventually stuff will come out about P. Diddy like it has. But I don't think that there's going to be a tremendous amount of justice. That's there never seems to be when it comes to kids. And what I find kind of startling is I'm the only guy that's put together the Damian Williams nexus between the two. I've, I've never heard anybody else talk about Damian Williams. I mean, I'm sure that there's other people who put this together, but they can't do what you do because of the Soros, the Soros is, you know what I'm saying? They can't. Maybe you don't care, but some of these people, they work under somebody that probably was funded by Soros. Look into that. I want y'all to understand. Look into, look into George Soros. Look into a lot of stuff that he has done. Look into a lot of things he has funded. You know what I'm saying? Look into that. People talk about, like, this guy or that guy and all this salacious bullshit, but I've never heard Damian Williams mentioned in any coverage that has anything to do with uh, P. Diddy. I mean, there was, there was, it also seemed like he had a, a, been very addicted to power and control because there are also, and correct me if I'm, these may be rumors, but I think it does come out. Uh, I mean, wasn't he having junior artists sodomize him on camera and, and, and such? Yes. That's crazy work. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Yo. What? Bro. Oh, my God, bro. That's nuts. And then he was also Bill cosby women, too. Giving them roofies. What was, so that, but that was, that was all power and control. You'll never leave this record label. I own your ass. Yeah. You're going to sodomize me right here on camera or this all goes away. I mean, is, is that how it went? Now, I haven't really found the particulars of it yet like that, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, when we're talking about P. Diddy, we're talking about a thoroughly reprehensible individual. And Little Rod in his lawsuit says that one of the rappers had a fight with P. Diddy and his son, and they went into the bathroom and the shots rang out, and the rapper was shot, and P. Diddy told Little Rod and some other people to, to move him outside of the studio and say that he'd been hit by gunfire from a drive-by shooting. Now, see, that's a, that's a weird story to me because... You move the body. Now, this is what I mean. Like, some of these stories, it has to be a chain of command that goes along with all of this, right? You have to understand. When you get shot, right? Well, not every, not every, 
police station has a CSI uh, or, you know, you want to CSI and, and uh, all of those shows. Not every one of them has these Dexter Morgans and all this stuff. No, they don't have a blood splatter analyst. They don't have all that. So they basically, they have an investigator come in and they just, sometimes they just chalk it up. They don't know what happened, right? Because they have to pay for this or these people to come in to do analyze, the analyzing, all this stuff. So not all police stations have this. Now, there's some big cities, they do have this criminal investigation uh, unit or crime scene unit and all that shit, right? Who comes in and does this. So there's a chain, right? You have to understand this. If you take a person outside, after they've been shot, you take them outside, the blood from where they took them, unless they put them in plastic, you know what I'm saying? Which they would have to go to the store. You have to take all this stuff in consideration. The longer the person sits there, the more blood is coming out, right? So you have to take them to the store. The one thing about blood that you got to understand is it goes everywhere. In some places, sometimes it goes places you don't even know where it went. So you can clean something top to bottom and you think you got it all clean, but it still be one piece of blood. All it takes is a tiny piece and they could put this blue light turn on and they can see wherever it went. They get it splattered all over the top of the ceiling and it don't look like it because to the naked eye, you can't see it. But when they put that blue light on it, you see everything, right? So look, you got to ask yourself. So Little Rod said that they moved the body to the street and said it was a drive-by, right? Now there's cameras everywhere, depending on where they were at. These cameras, obviously the police would pull the camera to see the drive-by, right? Or... Did they put them somewhere where there's no cameras? I highly doubt it. They were, I believe they were in Cali California, but there's cameras everywhere out there. So it is cameras everywhere, anywhere. There's rain cameras, all this stuff. So you have to take this into consideration. Where did they put the body? So when they dragged the body, where did, where did that blood go? You know what I'm saying? Did they put them inside of something, drag them, took them out of it and put them in the street? Did anyone see them on the street? Because he said he got hit by a drive-by in the street. So did anybody, was there any cars there? That seeing them drop the body there. You know what I'm saying? Did he block off the street? Like, it's a bunch of different things that come into play. So when when Little Rod told that story, he said they he did P Diddy made them take him outside and make it seem like it was a drive-by. I had to question everything that happened to the body. Because this is not just a movie where you could move a body outside and that's it. No, it don't work like that. Because when, when they do forensics, I mean, when they do the autopsy, they can tell if the body was moved. They can tell if the body, somebody grabbed the wrist after death, before death. They can tell all this stuff. But it depends on what coroner you get because the coroner might be a crooked coroner who works for the police department who are crooked. So that could have happened. So let's see what he has to say about it. And actually it was reported in L.A. that he was hit by gunfire from a drive-by shooting. And here's the, the thing with that. How are cops going to not be able to differentiate someone shot at point blank and then shot by a drive-by shooting? I mean... The, that, 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 it, that even makes it even worse. If he was shot point blank and, you're, and, and Little Rod is saying that he took him outside, and put him on a sidewalk, and it said it was a drive-by. How do you not know? Like, like, come on, they know. They know. That would be pretty easy. Yeah. To to show the difference, but that's how it's down. It's it's down, and according to the mainstream media, it's down as a drive-by shooting. And nothing happened. And what's really, I find. Troubling, shocking. His head of security, Free Muhammad, was the head of security for Michael Jackson. So there's a guy, Free Muhammad, there's a guy that knows how to keep secrets. You know, it is, it is, and it is. I didn't know that. So his head of security was the head of security for Michael Jackson? Man, these aren't coincidences. I, well, yeah, I mean, you, 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 there, you reach so many coincidences that, you know, I mean, 
what can you extrapolate? That, but I would say that Muhammad is a guy that, Free Muhammad is a guy that knows how to keep secrets. And he's also, from my research, a, a great fixer. He's got really good connections in the uh, Los Angeles Police Department and LA Sheriff. The kind of connections that would enable someone who is shot at point blank range and then it's reported that they're shot by a drive-by shooting, those type of connections. That's crazy. That's crazy. So basically y'all saying, what he's saying is they were all in on this. And it's my thing, right? This is a question I have. Like, so if they were all in on this, why is Diddy the only one getting arrested when it comes to that? The uh, Well, he didn't get arrested for that. Obviously, I guess that's the reason why. Because they were in on it. And he didn't get arrested for it. The other stuff he did. But if this is all true, and I'm hearing things about the LAPD and the sheriff's office out there that they're just as crooked as, as the criminals on the street. And some of them are criminals from the street. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the end of the video anyway. You don't really say too much more. Yeah. I mean, what people got to understand is some of this stuff is is they make it up. You know what I mean? They cover a lot of this stuff up. And I believe that what's going on with Diddy, the more I read about it, the more I see, Diddy has a lot of secrets on everybody. And just like he said, some of these people, they go in these rooms and these these, these people, these, these, these women who they appear to be women and they're minors, and he has them on tape doing it. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people are going to say they didn't know. But the law don't care if you didn't know. We say ignorance isn't an excuse to break the law. That's what they say. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, if you jumped over a fence and you trespassed on somebody's property, they say, well, I didn't know it was trespassing. Well, ignorance is an excuse. That's not a, an excuse. You didn't know. You're still guilty. Because anybody could use that. Well, I didn't know that this was a bad crime. I mean, well, it's a crime here. Different states have different laws. So I don't know what's going to happen with this whole Diddy thing. But I do know that if they have this guy on the case and he was on the Epstein case, it's crazy how some of these Soros people do and they've been doing and we don't really look into that. We just let it slide. But there's a lot, a lot, there's a lot of stuff that the Soros family has done. Funded a lot of stuff that destroyed a lot of things. And I'm not going to get too much into it because this is not what this is about. Look, y'all go look this stuff up, man. I just had to bring y'all that clip because I thought it was fascinating. All right, man. Y'all have yourself a good afternoon. See y'all. Peace. Bye. <laughs>